Have you ever wanted to play a game where you can dropkick a guy, knock him over, steal his weapon, then end his bloodline with that weapon all in the span of two seconds of super slow-mo? Then this is the game for you. Severed Steel is a fast-paced first-person shooter based in mobility and style made by Greylock Studio, the same team working on the game Echo Point Nova, the demo of which I covered a little while ago. It's a couple years old at this point, but it seems to have flown under the radar big time. What I love about Severed Steel is how it takes relatively standard modern first-person shooter mechanics and bends them into something completely unique. There's three full game modes, the Campaign, Firefight, and Rogue Steel. Campaign mode is self-explanatory, Firefight is an arcade slash instant action mode, and Rogue Steel is a modifiable roguelite mode. Severed Steel also features a level editor and Steam Workshop support for levels created there. Severed Steel is a rare kind of first person shooter for me, where its entire draw is based on the merit of gameplay alone. Here you won't find a 15 to 30 hour long campaign with lengthy chapters and characters and story elements. Severed Steel promises very little, and delivers on every single promise. I would argue, despite some very minor gripes, that based on what this game sets out to do, it is nearly perfect. Let's get into the details. Severed Steel is very much a movement shooter, inspired by the likes of Titanfall, the modern Doom games, and also other games like Superhot, which seems like a contradiction, I know, but bear with me. Upon starting the game and jumping into the campaign, you are quickly tutorialized on how to play. It's succinct and to the point, lasting maybe 5 minutes at the most until you get into the real action. You have a normal double jump and slide, as well as a wall run, but instead of a dash or something similar, there is a dive function. Severed Steel focuses on fluidity in maneuvering rather than sharp, lightning fast movesets. Diving can be done at almost any time. While running or even standing still, a dive can give a boost of momentum. In the air, it can act almost as a triple jump, allowing you to close wide gaps or act as an oh shit button when you're about to fall off the map. And when you land, as long as you have some speed, that dive will automatically transform into a slide. There's no cooldown or meter or anything of the sort for it. The trade-off here is controlling that momentum. I cannot tell you how many times I fell off the map on this level because I misjudged a dive and lost all sense of direction. To add to this, the Y-axis is not locked to a set angle in Severed Steel, meaning you can forget 360 no-scopes, try doing a 360 vertical no-scope. Actually, all shots are no-scope. There's no aim down sights. But not to worry, every gun except for the flamethrower and grenade launcher are 100% hit scan and are seemingly completely accurate all of the time, meaning aim down sights isn't really needed. Instead, your normal aim down sight button activates a bullet time. The meter is located on the bottom of your crosshair and depletes as bullet time is active. Severed Steel rewards you for playing quickly and aggressively. Health and bullet time are replenished by killing enemies. Guns do not reload. Instead, when your gun is empty, you can either physically throw it at an enemy or you will automatically pick up a nearby gun that has ammo in it. You can also throw any gun at any time by pressing G. Sliding into enemies or kicking them by pressing F causes them to fly in the air and drop their gun, allowing you to take it. And if you're quick, you can actually steal their secondary weapons out of their holsters without knocking them over. I love this so much. Unlike other games in this genre that encourage movement, in Severed Steel it is required. The mantra of move or die is an absolute in this game. The enemies are as aggressive as you are and there are a lot more of them than you. When Doom Eternal was ramping up to release, there was a lot of talk about the fun zone in terms of gameplay. Keeping the player on the move and constantly both thinking and reacting was the idea. These days it's up to debate if Eternal still falls into that zone. There's a lot to be said about specific enemies possibly requiring you to play in certain ways, 
Personally, I always like the Marauder forcing players like me out of their comfort zone a bit, but I'm getting off track. The point is, I fully believe Severed Steel is constantly and totally right in the middle of that fun zone. And this is because every mechanic I've talked about so far culminates in the stunt system. While you are either diving, sliding, or wall running, you enter what I will call stunt mode. While in stunt mode, two very important things happen. You do not take damage, and the bullet time meter does not deplete. Remember how I said movement is required in Severed Steel? This is why. Steel, the character you control, is very squishy. On higher difficulties, you will die in 3-4 to four shots. In fact, canonically, you don't even have health but luck, indicating that when you lose a hit point, it's actually Steel's luck running out, and once it's out, she dies from a single bullet. It's functionally the same, but adds some fun flavor to the character and matches the feel of the gameplay very well. In order to survive, you must move and you must stunt. I promise you, if you try to play this game like a cover shooter or try to ignore some of the mechanics, you will have a bad time. I know this because I did that. Back when I covered the Echo Point Nova demo, I said this. I'll also be checking out the studio's previous game, Severed Steel, soon. And I fully intended to cover Severed Steel soon after. But when I tried it, I bounced off of it pretty hard the first time. In fact, I couldn't get past the first level because I wasn't allowing myself to play the game as intended. I also tried playing on the second highest difficulty my first time around, which was a mistake. I highly recommend playing through the campaign the first time on Cold Steel or Tempered Steel to get the feel of the mechanics. On Cold Steel, your bullet time is infinite no matter what, and you regen health naturally, in addition to enemies being less accurate and such. I say this because the campaign is pretty short. It's about 3 hours, give or take, depending on how often you die. In all honesty, I see the campaign as a lengthy tutorial the first time around ramping up the difficulty just enough in each stage to get you used to the mechanics. It's also meant to be played multiple times with the New Game Plus mode, adding a lot more enemies throughout and increasing the difficulty. The campaign itself is a linear world broken up into individual levels with a few different sets of objectives. Without any spoilers, the story follows the player character, Steel, as she attempts to force the company she works for to pay her workman's compensation for an industrial accident. Of course, when they refuse to pay, she decides instead to just kill everybody. Oh, I forgot to mention, you don't have a left hand. Due to this, a few levels in, you get something better than a hand. A cannon. The cannon has multiple versions unlocked through completing the campaign a couple times, as well as playing the other modes. It is great for crowd control, as well as blowing holes through walls and floors. Oh yeah, the levels are nearly fully destructible. Except for the outer bounds, the entirety of the levels are built up of voxels, allowing for dynamic destruction of almost everything. This coupled with the dynamic enemy AI means that it is nearly impossible to have the exact same experience in a level twice without any procedural generation or section randomization. Combine this with the new game plus for the campaign, and the short runtime becomes a total non-issue, at least for me. I can imagine after many, many runs through it can get repetitive, but all games get repetitive after some point. If it gets to that point though, not only is there a long ass list of bonus campaigns as well as workshop support, there's also two other modes. Firefight is the second available mode, which acts as a progression based arcade mode. It features an outrageously large list of maps, including every campaign level as well as many new ones. It has a basic leveling system to unlock new maps, weapons, and mutators. Levels are gained by just playing and getting what are essentially experience points. These can be gained by chaining different stunts and kills together in quick succession, completing map specific challenges, or just getting through each map, though that last one won't get you very far. Certain mutators can also multiply the amount of points gained, but those scores won't be saved to any global leaderboards. This is a really fun mode to replay over and over again to try out different weapons, mutators, and arm cannon configurations to try to get the best score possible. The absolute best I can manage is an S on a select few maps. And the best possible rank is S++, which is apparently elusive to most people, including me, but is possible. You just have to be very good at video games. The mutators have a wide range of effects including classics like Big Head Mode or Infinite Ammo, interesting modifiers such as Like Water that allows you to chain stuns even harder by being able to dive from a slide or wall run from a dive, both of which you cannot do normally, and challenges like reducing the time slow effect or tripling the amount of enemies. By mixing or matching this huge array of mutators on every map, you can easily get hours upon hours of playtime from this one mode. 
Also, mutators can be used in the campaign with New Game Plus, so there's another thousand reasons to replay the main campaign over and over again. When I was recording footage for the intro, I zoned in so hard I lost all track of time. I noticed a little bit into the session my right ankle was hurting, so I glanced over at my record time, which turned out to be 55 minutes. And that's when it hit me. I was so engrossed in this mode, I had not moved for almost an hour, and my left foot was digging into my ankle because that's the position I was sitting in when I started playing. So be prepared to lose some time playing this. Also, Firefight has full workshop support for maps and a playlist mode where you can load multiple maps in and play them one after another without returning to the menu. And to be honest, I could just play this map over and over again and probably never get bored. If you enjoy roguelikes or lights, then Severed Steel has you covered as well. If you've completed the campaign and got bored of Firefight, you can always try Rogue Steel. This mode sets you up with a mini campaign of 10 maps randomly chosen from the entire list of Firefight and campaign maps, including more maps exclusive to Rogue Steel. Like I said earlier, there's no procedural generation or map randomization, so the maps themselves don't change, meaning you can get a feel for each map and not worry about everything being changed up on you. At the beginning of the run and in between each stage, you are given the opportunity to take a mutator card. These range vastly, mirroring the firefight mutators. Some give you a huge gameplay bonus, and some make the moment-to-moment -moment fighting more difficult in exchange for huge point multipliers. As you complete runs and accumulate more points, you can also unlock various cosmetics for Steel and the Arm Cannon. Steel's outfits are unlocked through just completing runs, and Cannon skins are unlocked via point thresholds. Points from each run add up to a total amount, so the daunting millions of points required for later Cannon skins aren't as expensive as they look. These skins can also be used over in Firefight and the Campaign. Also, some mutators in Firefight are unlocked by rolling them as cards in Rogue Steel first. I really like how each mode, while separate, still has elements that blend together with the other two modes so none of it feels disjointed. Rogue Steel also features a few advanced options to affect your runs to either make the game easier and more accessible, or make it so hard you have to be a literal god to make it through all 10 levels. And that's another overall feature I really appreciate from Severed Steel. Along with the standard difficulty options, it also has a a range of toggleable accessibility options. Pretty much everything that isn't a core mechanic can be turned off if you want. Automatic weapon pickups, kick aim correction, checkpoints, even air control if you're a masochist or just hate yourself. You can also turn on auto kick and auto wall run if the game is still too overwhelming on easy. Greylock obviously wants everyone and anyone to experience Severed Steel, and I do too. It also has full controller support and recently received full Steam Deck support. So if you're getting one of those fancy new OLED Steam Decks, allow me to recommend you try this out to break it in. I haven't played it myself on a controller as I much prefer to use keyboard and mouse for FPS games, but I've heard it plays just as well on a controller. I also messed around in the level editor a bit. It's a bit different than say, using a full game engine and has quite the learning curve. Most of the tools aren't exactly self-explanatory, but the lead or only dev, I'm not certain, has a great tutorial video on the editor linked below. Because the levels are based entirely on voxels, the actual building tools in the editor are fully voxel focused. There's also menus for spawnable objects, enemies, and the like, but without sitting down for a good few hours, I likely won't understand how to actually make all of these systems work. Frankly, I'd rather leave the map creation to those who are good at it. I can throw something basic together, but anything advanced is beyond my capabilities right now. To give some huge merit to the in-game editor, based on that same tutorial video, the majority of the official levels in the game were made using these exact same tools. I think what makes this game so addicting is not only the top-notch borderline perfect gameplay, but also the weapon design and the visual and audio style. There is an expanse of guns. Pistols, rifles, shotguns, heavy weapons, everything you could want or need. Each gun has its place either in unique gameplay or just in sheer badassery. And just like the map, some guns don't even show up in the main campaign. I never once saw this cowboy revolver, but it's available in Rogue Steel and Firefight. Personally, my favorite set of guns are the shotguns, because Severed Steel is one of the few games I've played that actually understands that shotguns are dangerous and borderline scary weapons, even when you're farther than two feet away. It makes them almost overpowered in most situations, but it is just so much fun, I don't care. It helps that there's no bullet sponge enemies. Most of your opponents will die in three to four body shots depending on the weapons, and as far as I can tell, a headshot is an insta-kill on every enemy, with two exceptions, the heavies. The two heavy types are very distinct in how they act, their weapons, and their weaknesses. The first type of heavy is the flamethrower guy, I don't know what they're actually called. He obviously has a flamethrower, 
which is a very cool weapon to feature as no other weapon in the game has any sort of persistent splash damage besides it. But what is interesting about him is he is impervious to damage except for the weak point on his back, the fuel canister backpack thingy. Instead of having to pour thousands of rounds into this sort of mini boss type, you have to be smart and use your movement skills to maneuver around him long enough to rupture the pack. Once that weak point goes, he's dead, he blows up. So while he may be a challenge for new players, experienced ones can dispatch him very quickly. The other type is this grenade launcher man. Again, I don't know if they have official names or not. This enemy is about the closest Severed Steel gets to a bullet sponge. He's heavily armored around the head, meaning a headshot won't dispatch him like the others, and it takes many shots to break that armor. But here's the thing, you learn the mechanics and practice, and he too can be embarrassed within seconds. The armor is susceptible to explosives. A direct hit from the standard arm cannon will destroy his armor, allowing you to get a headshot in if you're skilled enough. This is the same if you manage to get your hands on a grenade launcher like his. But let's say for a second you don't have a grenade launcher and you're out of cannon ammo. Well, you can kick the grenades he shoots at you back at him. It's incredibly hard to get the timing right, especially when you're being fired upon from all sides, but if you manage to do it, it is euphoric. And of course, if all else fails, shoot it until it dies. The audio cues and sound design add so much depth on top of the gameplay itself. Enemies shouting and cursing at you while you obliterate their squads, the immensely satisfying hit and kill sounds, and the amazing weapon sound design work in beautiful conjunction to the gameplay, creating a constant, addictive feedback loop in my brain. Like I said, I get so engrossed in this game I forget to move. Honestly, I'm lucky I remember to breathe. And to keep the energy up, Severed Steel features an absolutely rocking, face-tearing soundtrack, as one would expect. But it strays away from the distorted guitars of a hard rock or metal sound like the famous Doom soundtracks. I'm not super well versed in genres, I typically just listen to what sounds good to me, but I can at the very least say it falls into a high-octane, electronic genre that fits the sleek neon visual aesthetic. Speaking of, this game is gorgeous, and in spite of the purely voxel world creation, runs like a dream. The minimum GPU requirement is a goddamn 750 for crying out loud, and if you do happen to have a powerful graphics card, Severed Steel features an RTX mode, allowing for all of these beautiful neon panels in game to actually emit some light. Look, Severed Steel has quickly shot to the top of my list of first person shooter titles, especially in the movement shooter subgenre. But the problem is, I could ramble on for hours, show you entire playthroughs worth of footage, but it wouldn't come close to playing it yourself. Now, I get it, money is really fucking tight these days, and dropping 25 bucks on a game this small may seem ludicrous, but to be honest, it's almost always on sale. I picked it up for about $8 a good few months ago, and if you're watching this video within a couple days of release, it's on sale again right now. But even then, if you're not sure, if I haven't sold you on this beautiful game, there is a demo you can try. At least, there's a download demo button on the Steam page. I can't confirm if it works or not, nothing seems to happen when I click it, but I think that's because I own the game already. So yeah, I think that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, consider taking a look at some of my other content, or even subscribing. I make a variety of videos on here, mostly rambling about games I like, but it's a fun time. Anyway, I've held your attention long enough. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>